Good day, and welcome back to our DSP overview series. This is part eight, and today we will be taking a look at the wall panel controller. Now, in order to connect to the controller, we obviously need to be connected to our DSP uh, firstly, and as we are already connected live, and if you would like to see how to connect to the Alphatron DSPs, please remember to review part two on how to connect to the DSP. In order to open up the panel and connect to the wall panel, you would need to navigate to settings and panel settings, or you could use the shortcut key for control P. That just opens up on a secondary screen here on my computer. So there we, ha there we have it. There is our interface for connecting to the panels. Now you'll see currently I have no panels online. I have a panel prepared for us here. And there you can see the panel uh, come up now, but currently the panel is still switched off. So I have not plugged in its uh, network cable. The panel connects to your same network that the DSP connects to, and would obviously need to be in the same range. But the panel is also PoE uh, powered, so you need no additional cables to actually connect the panel up to your system. So I'm gonna go ahead and just connect the panel and you will see the panel boots up on the camera on screen there. And there we go. So now with the panel booted up, I can click on my refresh button here on the right hand side to see all my online devices. Because I'm already connected to the DSP, I can already see the DSP's uh, connection there. If I click the refresh button, you would see that now I can also see the panel. But my panel is still in its default IP range. So as we would do for the DSP, we need to set its IP so that it's in the same range as my DSP. So currently our DSP is in the 192.168.1 range. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the set IP button and I will just change my IP address to the same range. We're gonna make it uh, ID number 11 or IP address number 11. So we'll keep it to the same numbering as it uh, was on the default, but I'm just changing it to be in my network range. So 192.168.1.11, if I say okay, it does a rescan and now I can click and drag and bring my panel into my screen. Now from here, I can double click the panel and I can program its settings. I can firstly rename my panel and I'll just uh, rename it to its default name. And this is the ALF-CP1L panel. And there you can see its IP address as well. You can't change the IP address from here, obviously. And this window here gives us all the different aspects that we can, uh, or that we have programmed to the unit. Now, since it's a blank unit, we haven't programmed anything yet. We can go ahead and press add menu. Now from here, you'll see all the different parameters that you can program on the unit, volume, uh, button control, preset controls. You can send ex external commands um, from the panels as well. And you can activate or, or select matrix uh, cross points and reroute them from here. But for now, we'll just do a basic volume control. So I can click on uh, parameters there and select one or channel one's gain. And that's basically channel one's volume control. It will be this volume control here. I can then also give it a friendly name. We'll just rename this maybe to volume and like that. So input one volume. We can also set the maximum and minimum volumes that we want to adjust. So we can, for instance, say it must be a maximum of zero and a minimum of minus 10. And that will allow us to only adjust the microphone within a 10 dB range. And then we can also say in, in what dB steps we want to adjust. So we can adjust it one or two or one and a half dB step. So it's a, it's a half dB step change uh, per, per turn of the controller. Now, if I then press OK, you'll see that it has now programmed that command as option one. Now you would see on my, on my panel, nothing has actually changed yet because we have not uploaded this information to the panel. Now, if you want to continue, you can continue to add different settings to the panel from here, but I can press OK. That information is now now stored. If I double click the panel again, I can get back to, to that window and edit that panel further if I need to. 
But in order for this panel to actually control the DSP, we also have to associate this panel with the DSP. Now that is quite an easy process because my DSP is already online. I can just click and drag my online DSPs into my window. And if for instance, you had multiple DSPs and multiple panels, you could just continue to add the DSPs and the, the panels, the wall panels and associate them to the correct DSPs in that way. Now, in order to associate it, I just click and drag that little uh, round connector block on the side, connection points on the side, and I click and drag that and release it, uh, click at least on my DSP side. So now this control panel is associated with that DSP, but I still need to upload this information to both devices so that both devices know that that association has taken place. And again, that is a quite an easy process. I can just click on upload to panel and you'll see now it's saving my parameters to the panel and you would see on the little uh, window, the little camera on the panel itself that the panel's name has now has now changed. Uh, so that has taken that new name and uploaded that to the panel. Now I can also from here save all my different settings. So I can save this layout and if I had a saved layout I could also open one. And lastly, I could also clear any settings from this panel should I wish to associate this panel, for instance, in future with a different DSP or if there's changes to my system, I can always reassociate that uh, panel to a new DSP. Okay, so if I just quickly go ahead, we'll go across to the panel itself, then I will show you just uh, how easy it is to navigate on the panel but in order to do that let's just quickly add one or two more items to our list so i'll just make a preset one and two button and i'll also maybe just make a volume for output so again i'm just going to select volume i'm going to scroll down and go to my output channel one volume okay i'll just leave all those settings default for now and press ok again i need to now just upload this information because I have made changes to my to my panels control so I'll click on upload and there we have it it's been uploaded to my panel now from here I can just click and close the panel settings window and I'm going to go over to the panel and show you the control on the panel itself well here we are on the panel so the panel operation is quite simple the dial is a push and a turn rotary encoder so uh, when it's in the home menu like this, I can press on the controller and it will open up my first menu. When I then rotate my controller, it'll go to my presets and then rotate again, it will go to my outputs. So if I go back to input one, so now when I press on the button, you'll see that the volume starts flashing. And from there, I can then make adjustments now, because I've limited my volume adjustment to, to 0 dBs on the high, you'll see I can't rotate this high any, anymore. And because I've made the limit minus 10 at the bottom, then it won't go less than minus 10 on my volume control there. To get out of it, I just press on the button again. Now I can go to my presets. I have preset 1, so if I select it, I can then select preset 1. Or preset 2 and when I select on that it'll then basically uh, load that preset or I can press on return to go back to my menus so now I'm back on my main menu and lastly my output volume I can again press and then adjust my output volume to the required setting and when I'm finished press it again and I'm back to my main menu well, that wraps up this episode of our DSP overview. If you are enjoying these videos, please drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell if you have not done so already. Lastly, if you require or want to view more information of our DSPs, please remember to visit our webpage at www.alphatronelectronics.com. See you next time.